I'm Michelle Zimmerman, an educator at Renton Prep in Seattle, Washington. I focus on middle and high school students with STEM and integrating the arts. I just completed a book on artificial intelligence called Teaching AI, Exploring New Frontiers for Learning. And when I approached this subject, I didn't want it to just be about technology because as humans, we will be working with machines more and more in the future. But if we even have a difficult time defining what counts as human intelligence, it would make sense that it's difficult to define what counts as artificial intelligence. And although there are huge strides in what people have done to make machines smarter and more intelligent, it's not quite integrated yet in a way that can replicate the way a human can process information, specifically in the area of making connections across dissimilar domains. Those are the things that are needed for creativity and innovation. So while machine learning can really help us dive deep into analysis and quick insights into things, it doesn't have the ability yet to be able to transfer that knowledge from one domain to the next. So I started talking with educators across the world, what they imagine, what they perceive, how they hope that technology can help them in the future, and what types of things they imagine possible. I also talked to industry leaders and experts, the types of jobs that exist now and the ones that might in the future. Some people have a concern that with increased technology, jobs will be automated, and what will we do then? Will there be need for teachers in the classroom? There actually will be, and they become more and more essential, but the role that we play will shift slightly. I visited a school in Kyoto, Japan, and heard how they start talking about tea ceremony and the way of tea with their students. They want them to know the importance of the moment, the ethics and traditions that go with that tea ceremony. The way of tea is really important as part of their culture, but they didn't give up looking at technology in the future for the sake of setting tradition and they didn't give up tradition for the sake of technology. They noticed that humanity is essential in that investigation of who we are and how we relate to people and machines around us. So that becomes part of the ethics and concepts that we can look at when we're looking at data and how implicit bias can start in technology, even before we realize it. We look at creativity and what things we can do as humans in ways that machines can't. Although there are machines that are starting to create haiku poems and piano compositions, original art, there are still components of emotion and tradition that humans have to offer that machines don't in the same way. So as we prepare kids for a future that moves towards trying to replicate artificial intelligence, we want to know what things we can do as educators to help prepare them for a future that is uncertain, where there are jobs that will exist that don't exist now. We look at STEM and how to combine multiple subjects, and that's one thing that we know humans do have the capacity for. They have the ability to look at something in one domain and see how it can apply in another. Not all humans are good at this yet, but as we're educators and start helping them to see those connections, they can build those skills. When they work in collaborative teams and start to work with people who are very different from themselves, they can start seeing new perspectives and apply those techniques into novel situations. We also know social and emotional learning is going to be incredibly essential for the future. We need to know how to interact with humans and teach them first before we can learn to teach machines. When we work with kids, especially in the middle and high school level, I want them to start looking at what it is to become a teacher, not just a learner. It's one thing for students to be in the center of learning, but another for them to take that learning and teach it to someone else. When they start teaching someone younger, they become more invested in that topic. And we know that they start seeing things in a different way. All of us as educators have had the experience when we taught someone new something for the first time and we realize we see it in a different way. The same thing happens for young children and for middle and high school students and adults. So bringing that into the understanding of teaching children to be teachers and also research and understand and reflect on their practice is going to be beneficial regardless of what kind of technology exists in the future.